What I essentially wanted to share with you is the idea of change. Something about the idea of changing ourselves, changing the condition of the Ummah. It's very easy to complain about change. It's very easy to complain about the lack thereof. People love, you know, uh, we talk about our, some of our elders, and they've done so many great things for us, but at the same time, one of the hobbies they have is sit around and talk about how corrupt governments are, and what's going on in Pakistan. Do you know what's going on in Pakistan? Oh, ho, ho, it's really bad. And then someone says, oh, you think that's bad? Let me tell you what's going on in Egypt. That's even worse. Oh, you got nothing on us. We got something bad going down in India. And they're just, everybody's bragging about how bad things are. It's like an entertainment session for them. Over chai. They're going to change, they're going to talk about all the problems of the world and nothing will change. And then you go back and do the same thing again. And you know what? They're not the only ones. Youth do it. You know what? Our masjid, nobody understands us. Nobody listens to us. We can't do any programs there. Our imam doesn't understand. Our board doesn't understand. Our scholars don't understand. Everybody's complaining constantly. We're all just complaining, 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 complaining. We become really, really good at it. And our pastime has become just a complain. There are entire khutbahs dedicated to what all the problems are and how bad things are. And we just get stuck in this rut of constantly looking at the world around us as a gloomy place. I used to think like that only because I lived in New York and it's normal for people in New York to be depressed. But as I started traveling, I started seeing so many amazing things happening across the country and so many creative efforts and so much new stuff coming from Muslims that I just never expected that it just makes me hopeful. Altogether, it just makes me hopeful. And it makes me personally say change is coming. You know one of the most common things I've heard at the end of a khutbah, at the end of a talk from people? Brother, you know, we try so much to remind people and give talks and khutbahs, that's all well and good. Nothing is changing. Nothing ever changes. I, you know how many times I've heard that? Like, why are you so depressed? Don't be depressed. First of all, change is not in, not in our hands. It's in Allah's hands. In Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. In that ayah, even the famous ayah, no doubt, it is Allah. He does not change the condition of whatever is afflicting a nation until they change what is within them, what is afflicting them on the inside, what's affecting them inside of themselves. Even in that ayah, Allah attributed change itself to Himself. Allah didn't say people will change things. Allah said He will change things for them. They just have to make a change inside of themselves. So that's really what I want to focus on. How is it that we can bring a change inside of ourselves? You know, the real battle all of us has is against our own self. Your worst enemy is like your best friend, it's yourself. No one else. No one knows you better than yourself. You know, if there's one person that knows all of your flaws, all of your weaknesses, all of the, all of the things you could be doing better, all the times you waste, all the things you shouldn't be involved in but you are anyway, all the bad habits you have, the ones that are known to others and the ones that are not known to others. If there's someone who knows that really, really, really well, it's you. It's you. And you have to learn and I have to learn to be hard on myself. It's very easy for someone in my position to get used to people saying, Brother, great speech, thank you so much, Alhamdulillah. And then shaitan comes from me and says, Hey, pat yourself on the back. And you say, Yeah, that was a great speech, wasn't it? Mm-hmm, that's right. And that might happen to you. You're at an MSA, you're at a masjid, you're helping out, people appreciate what you're doing, then you say, yeah, I'm pretty good over here. I'm doing all right. Everybody appreciates what I'm doing. You, we have to learn to constantly be hard on our own selves. To constantly look in the mirror. You know, psychologically speaking, people present a picture of themselves to the outside world. People, you know, especially it's problematic for public speakers because, you know, most of the time, most of you see me and people like me on a stage. We're giving a talk about Islam, but that's, I don't always do that. I switch, the, switch it off when I'm off of here. I play with my kids. I don't give them khutbah. You see what I'm saying? But then people see you, because they've always seen you in a certain light. They see that's all this person is going to be. Right? On some people, it puts a pressure on them to act a certain way in front of others. To, act, to look a certain way, act a certain way. And that might be you. You're so used to impressing people with how, whatever, religious you are, knowledgeable you are, committed you are, etc., etc. And you're constantly putting up this face that you start convincing yourself that's who you really are. We have to be able to be honest to ourselves if we're going to talk about change. One has to be able to stop complaining about the world and start complaining about themselves. What is wrong? What, are, what am I doing wrong? What are my shortcomings? What are the things that 
I look at myself and I say, well, if there were four or five things I could change about myself, if I could just do four or five things differently, what would they be? What would those things be that I wish I changed? What are the some things I wanted to accomplish last year and I never got to? I really wanted to though. I wanted to memorize like two more surahs. I wanted to study something. I want to finish reading that book. I never got around to it. But I really wanted to do it. What is keeping us from making those changes? That's the real like, bit of advice that I, at least I'll share with you what I do for myself. It works sometimes, it doesn't work other times. But I'm hoping inshallah you'll be better at it than I am and we're all going to be making changes for the better in our own lives. What I do for myself is basically ask myself a very simple question. I have two kinds of days. I have days where I'm home and days that I'm traveling. I've divided my life into two kinds of days. Days when I'm traveling and days when I'm home. And there are failures, because days that I'm home are all the same. Whether it's last week or the next week or two years before or two years after, it's going to be similar. They're all going to be the same. And the days that I'm traveling are all going to have similar things in them. There's going to be going from home to the airport and getting onto the plane and passing out and then the flight attendant waking me up to get off the plane, all that's going to be the same every time. There's going to be repetition. And in each of those two kinds of days, there are some things I could do better. There's some way I could use my time better. I could be more productive in some things. How do I make my, more use of that day? How do I make it more productive? That one day. You can fix one day, you fix your whole life. If you made one change to, your, to today, that means you've made that change for the rest of your life. For you, many of you, it's like weekdays and weekends. Your weekends are the same way every time. Your weekdays are the same way every time, right? Fix your weekdays. This time is for Salat. Right after that, there's this time for Qur'an. There's this time for me to learn something. There's this time for me to you know, get my homework done or whatever it may be. Discipline your life. Make that change in your life. You know what else people fail to do? That's most common and I, I personally have trouble with that also. And it's one of the hardest things to do is to maintain balance in your life. To maintain balance. Because we're pulled in many different directions. Our parents want our time. Our husbands and wives want their time. Our children want their time. Our career wants its time. Our friends want their time. Our masjid wants its time. Ourselves, we want to just be left alone. We need some time to ourselves. We have all these different poles, right? And it's really important that we maintain a balance between all of these different poles. And a lot of times, we fail to do it. And when we do, we end up wronging one thing or another. This is the biggest change you can bring in your life to create balance. There are people who give their wife a lot of time and their parents no time at all. There are people who give their parents a lot of time and they spend no time with their wife. There are people who are so bent upon fixing their career, they are almost not even existent in the lives of their children. It happens. And then there are those interesting characters who don't want anything to do with home, so they volunteer at the masjid all the time. I love masjid volunteers, but the guy says, hey, I'm gonna put up the chairs three days before the program, and I'll even sleep here. There's a problem at home. Go home. Get some balance in your life. <laughs> Right? We have to really assess honestly in our lives what changes do we have to make. And really changes to me is what you give time to. I mean the real asset all of us have is time. That's really all we have. And if we're utilizing it properly, our lives have moved towards the better. And if we're not, our lives are moving towards the worse. Allah tells us the sun and the moon, they follow an order. All of the acts of worship that we do in Islam somehow fall upon the sun and the moon. The prayers dependent on the positions of the sun. Eid and Ramadan and Hajj on the moon. And Allah tells us the sun and the moon follow a precise order. Our worship follows a precise order. What we're learning from that is your entire life should follow a precise order. Otherwise you'll keep thinking I should get that done and you'll never get it done. Because it never made time for it. We're just the people, we, once we get start playing a video game, we lose all track of time. But once you hit the, the PS3 or Xbox controller and you start sniping people off the rooftops, right? That's it. Regimes could change. The world could change. The, the stock market could crash. You wouldn't know you're in your room going, <laughs> that's, that's who you are. We have to show respect to time. That's the real change we bring in our lives. No, stop complaining about stuff. All of that will happen when you personally bring a positive change in your life.